Now, live on WPRI 12 and on WPRI.com, this is Eyewitness News This Morning. Coverage you can count on. Joe Namath bringing the Super Bowl trophy out on the field last night after the game. The Patriots winning Super Bowl 53, sixth title for the franchise. Another Lombardi trophy coming to Foxborough. That low-scoring game, but the Pats prevailed, and we'll have team coverage all morning long on that Super Bowl win, including when you can celebrate with the team this week. Good morning. It's 5 a.m., Monday, February the 4th. I'm Danielle North. Confetti flying once again for the Patriots. More about this a big win last night. And we'll have coverage from Atlanta, but first, let's check in with Michelle for a look at the forecast for Monday. Some uh, black ice concerns out there this morning. New England Nation bringing you full coverage of the Super Bowl champs. They've done it again. The Patriots, champions now for the sixth time, although last night's game not quite as thrilling, maybe, as the first five victories. Hey, wins a win, though. Pats fans, of course, will take it. So will the players. Pats and Rams set a record for the fewest points scored in the Super Bowl. 16 total. Tom Brady to Rob Gronkowski here in the fourth quarter sets up the only touchdown of the game. Sony Michelle punching it in from two yards out. That made the score 10-3. Pats defense keeping the Rams out of the end zone all night long. Stephon Gilmore, huge interception late. 13-3 the final. Yanni Karakis, Ruthie Polinski. Full recap this morning from Atlanta. Good morning and welcome into Mercedes-Benz Stadium with Luthi Polinski. I'm Yanni Karakas. The Patriots now six-time Super Bowl champs. Two hands needed for the rings for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, but this one a little bit different based on a lack of scoring. And Yanni, it was a double-digit win for the Patriots, ironically, because the game was tied 3-3 going into the fourth yeah. quarter. Totally bizarre. But in the end, all they needed was that one touchdown drive that Rob Gronkowski catch so big, leading to the Sony Michelle touchdown and the Patriots' defense doing their part to secure the Super Bowl win. In the biggest moments when we had to play our best football and compete the hardest, they did it. Uh, so... Um, but again, I can't say enough about them, the, the coaching staff, um, Brian Flores, uh, Josh McDaniels, Joe Judge, um, and, and all the rest of the staff. It is about being, you know, resilient and just keep on working. And then, uh, that's what our, that's what our group did. Um, it wasn't pretty, uh, but I'll take a ugly, a ugly win over a pretty loss any day. I mean, he played the best game he has all year and, uh, so proud of him, what he's accomplished, come back from his ACL. And uh, he just fought it out, grinded out like everyone else. I'm just so proud of him. He's, he's been an uh, incredible player for this team and the playoffs. And uh, he just cemented himself, you know, again, in the history of the NFL for, for what his accomplishments are. And Yanni, Julian Edelman, your MVP, 10 catches, 141 yards, an unbelievable performance from him. And this season, you look back at where they were after the Dolphins loss and the Steelers loss. Yeah. So impressive how they continue to improve to the end of the regular season, into the playoffs, playing their best brand of football and securing it in Atlanta on the game's biggest stage. With Ruthie Polinski, I'm Yanni Karakis. Back to you. So as we've seen several times in recent years, the win had Pat's fans flooding into the streets of Boston. Fans will be lining those streets once again for the parade. Another victory parade. It's so exciting. Another <laughs> one. And for more on that and some of the other celebrations, let's check in with Eyewitness News reporter Erica Ritchie continuing our team coverage. Hey guys, good morning. This never gets old, does it? Certainly not. I know last night when they clinched that sixth win, fireworks going off in my neighborhood. Certainly, I'm sure lots of other places as well. Lots of excitement among the fan base, both in Atlanta, of course, and back here at home. Let's start where our cameras began at Lucky's in East Providence. An eruption of cheers and applause as that title is secured, no doubt. Scenes like this once again playing out at bars and in many living rooms across the region late last night. Certainly on the URI campus, students were excited. The party spilling out onto the streets, even getting a bit unruly at times. You can see from this viewer video here, a dumpster being set on fire during the celebrations. We're told one person was arrested in connection with that fire. Two others were also taken into custody, but it's unclear why or if they were students. 
All right, so you heard the chief mention that they were prepared for it. He said they had all of their staff on the clock last night, in addition to South Kingstown police and fire officials on the campus as well. So things were contained and got back to normal fairly quickly. Now today, the team set to make their way back to southern New England, landing at TF Green sometime later today. Tomorrow, we're told from the mayor of the city of Boston, the duck boats will get fired up and another parade will be ready to go. It'll begin at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's the latest in the newsroom. I'm Erica Ritchie, Eyewitness News. Breaking overnight, Eyewitness News crews on the scene of a fire happened around 245, the scene at the uh, business on Plainfield Street in Providence near Dewey Street. We do have a call out to police. Stay with Eyewitness News this morning as we continue to bring you live updates. A suspect is facing several charges in connection to a police pursuit that happened yesterday. Eyewitness News has learned 33-year-old Anthony Gonzalez of Providence also had a warrant out for his arrest prior to the incident Sunday. Several Providence police cars and an ambulance by Broadway and Bainridge Ave were spotted. And then there was a car pulled over on 146 North at about 3.30 in the morning. And police tell us the two incidents are connected. Police apparently tried to pull Gonzalez over for a moving violation, but they say he refused and took off his driving then becoming reckless. One woman was taken away in an ambulance. Police tell us it was a domestic incident. Looking ahead to today, we get one of our first signs of spring. It is truck day for the Red Sox. Their equipment truck will be making a pit stop at McCoy Stadium while it's on its way down to Florida. Truck set to arrive at Pawtucket around 1 o'clock. Paul Sox collecting non-perishable food donations to give to the Rhode Island Food Bank. Bring a donation and you will get free tickets to opening night at McCoy, which is April 11th. Eight past the hour when we come back here on Eyewitness News this morning. Speed camera controversy, the grace period for drivers is over. A few new cameras flipping the switch on today. We'll tell you where. And Eyewitness News learning more details on that sick out at the Kikamu Middle School. What we've learned as students return to the building today. But first, here's a look at some winning lottery numbers for you. Time now is 5:11, and there are four new cameras in Providence that will start to find speeders today. They're located on Webster, Reservoir, Fruit Hill, and Elm Grove Avenues. Cameras have been online since December, issuing warnings to anyone going over the speed limit in the school zone. But today, they will start officially charging fines for information, including a complete list of all of the speed camera locations in the capital city. Head to our website, WPRI.com. Rhode Island Senate Majority Leader Michael McCaffrey is working to ban plastic straws in restaurants. He introduced a bill that would prohibit a restaurant from providing plastic straws unless a customer requests one. The bill is similar to one in California that went into effect back in January, calling for notice of violation for first and second offenses. Update now. Classes will resume today at Kickhamu at Middle School in Warren following the canceling of classes last week due to an alleged sick out by teachers. According to a letter sent out by Superintendent Mario Andre, Bristol Warren Regional School Committee plans on meeting with the teachers union on the matter this week. Today, a Warren police officer will be at the school while classes are in session. More coverage you can count on coming up on Eyewitness News this morning. If you're in an Uber and you sense trouble, and maybe you don't want to dial 911 in front of your driver, well, there's new technology to help you through the process. Plus, Monday after the Super Bowl, every subject is tough for students. Waking up, especially hard, absenteeism is high. So one Massachusetts school giving students a little incentive to show up. You're watching Eyewitness News on this Monday morning. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us on this Monday morning, Patriots winning the Super Bowl last night. And check this out in Boston. The Prudential Tower is lit up during the early morning hours here saying go Pats to honor the team. Covering New England now, a new 911 technology through Uber's app can help if you feel you're in trouble and need assistance from the police. Right now in Cambridge, Mass., when you click 911 assistance and swipe, you make a 911 call that includes every detail of your ride, including your name, location, destination, and Uber driver's information. Even if you swipe 911 and can't talk, police know to send help. Cambridge police have yet to get a call, though, through the system. Well, after the Super Bowl and all that excitement, some people are a little sluggish on a Monday morning when it comes to commitments the next day, right? But there's one Easton High School giving students an incentive to get to class on time today. For every point the Patriots scored, the kids can add the same amount of points to a test score or homework assignment, but they do have to show up on time today. That they can use towards a homework assignment, a quiz, a, a classroom grade. I'm going to use it on my history because the Patriots are going to make some history this Sunday, baby. 
Yeah, they're lucky they get to add those 13 points, right? But some schools in the Bay State instead are going to delay their start times by an hour. But again, those high school students in Easton, they get to bring up their grade toward whatever classroom assignment they want. Just 13 points, though. I'd need a lot more help than that. I mean, I would need a 40-point a effort by the Patriots in the Super Bowl to straighten things out there back in the uh, late 80s. Anyway, uh, let's not talk about my grades. Let's talk about the weather for the day ahead. It's, uh... Now look at a Target 12 investigators exclusive that we are working on for tonight, the 100K Club. You know, for years we've been tracking the number of state employees that make $100,000 a year or more. And our latest findings show a big spike in those numbers. Target 12 investigator Tim White here with a preview of his findings. Ten years ago, the number of public sector workers in the 100K Club was measured in the hundreds. Last year, it was well into the thousands. We found one area of state government saw the largest leap in six-figure paychecks, correctional officers, some taking home roughly $200,000 in overtime alone. Shouldn't there be limits on overtime? Well, there are limits. We're limited to no more than four shifts in a row. That would be working 32 hours straight in a job which I imagine is pretty demanding. You don't think that's unsafe? I don't have, I can't put my finger on one situation that, um, where it's created a problem. Tonight, our full findings on the number of public workers pulling down six figures plus a state lawmaker reacts to our investigation and proposes a change. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White. Eyewitness News. And your time now is 523. Still ahead on Eyewitness News this morning. So another Super Bowl in the books. Now beer companies hoping more people will raise a glass with their drink in a cup. Details servicing on what they spent on commercials. On WPRI 12. Now in consumer coverage and those commercials, millions around the world. Tuning in to watch the Super Bowl, some companies betting big time on their commercials. And this was one of Budweiser's ads. Industry sources tell CBS News, beer companies like Stella Artois, Budweiser, and Bud Light estimate they spent more than $50 million on their commercials. The few companies promoted their vintage brands in the hopes of winning over customers. Facebook is turning 15 today. Mark Zuckerberg and his co-founders launched the platform from his Harvard dorm room back in 2004. Over 2 billion people connected around the world. Facebook's expansion has included buying Instagram for a billion dollars, taking the company public. Along the way, Zuckerberg is facing privacy concerns, legal troubles. Zuckerberg says company investing billions to keep the site secure. And now we want to let you know which local companies are now hiring as Eyewitness News has teamed up. With the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training, every day we pass along new and local job openings here on Eyewitness News. Amtral, they're holding a recruitment tomorrow from 9 to 11 at the Network RI Career Center, which is in West Warwick. They're looking to fill multiple positions, including machine operators and forklift drivers. Head to EmployRI.org and search for job number 825-001. Or you can always check out our website if you click on the Call for Action tab and then Job Finder. It is almost 5.30 up next on Eyewitness News this morning. After this break, more team coverage of the Super Bowl win. Of course, our top story all morning long, Patriots taking home that big win in Atlanta. You're watching Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. Mirror image, working overnight, getting those Super Bowl Patriot t-shirts out to the stores this morning. We're back with more coverage you can count on. Now, live on WPRI 12 and on WPRI.com. This is Eyewitness News This Morning. Coverage you can count on. What will motivate you to come back? How will you reset and do it all over again? Look at this. Yay! How could this not motivate you? This is what it's all about. Another win, another ring. The Patriots winning Super Bowl 53. Tom Brady and his daughter proud standing next to the Lombardi Trophy this morning. We'll have team coverage of the big win. And never wonder just exactly how Super Bowl champion shirts hit the shelf so fast the next morning. We'll explain coming up. Good morning. It is Monday, February 4th. I'm Patrick Little. And I'm Danielle Norris. This confetti never gets old. We'll be bringing you highlights, of course, all morning long. But first, we want to check in with Michelle. I'll have another update on your commute coming up. New England Nation adding to its record collection of big game titles. Last night's win over the Rams in Super Bowl 53. I expect two mil. Two million people. We just got six. <laughs> we just got six. <laughs> Let's go! Super Bowl MVP Julian Edelman. Very excited about the Patriots taking home their sixth Lombardi trophy. And as he said, he's hoping 
for two million people to show up at the parade in Boston tomorrow. And the news of the wind making the front pages on newspapers all across the nation today. Of course, those outside of our area yeah, not impressed with the 13 to 3 final score. And the New York Post, <laughs> they're always so excited when we win. Super bored is their headline there, not only for the game, but for the halftime show. And they add, quote, in final insult, Patriots win. Super jealous. Yes. More like it. All right. Much more celebratory tone in the Boston papers. Today's Boston Globe with the headline, Dynasty Rolls On. And Boston Herald getting a little more creative going with the joy of six. Get it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's for, what's next for the Patriots? This is a family show, including the future of Star Tide and Rob Gronkowski. We go back to Atlanta. Here's Yanni Karakis and Ruthie Polinski. Good morning. Welcome back to Atlanta with Ruthie Polinski. I'm Yanni Karakis. Rob Gronkowski perhaps played his final game. He was noncommittal about it, but he was essential in the Patriots win, and you have to give him a lot of credit. Battling through injury this year and getting another ring. Rob Gronkowski making that critical catch near the end of the game, which led to that Sony Michelle touchdown. Gronk clearly in good spirits all week, but still not willing to speak about his future. Tom is going to be there. It's uh, he threw it up to see him. I had to go make the play. And, uh, it was just a real one won the game. It was a team win. Our defense played great. Our special teams played great. And our offense came through when we needed it. Come on, Chris. Did you think this game was going to be as tight as it was going to be? No, you never know how it's going to go. You never know how it's going to go. And uh, we just grinded it out kept going. And a win is a win. We won the Super Bowl, baby. Third, three-time champ I am. Brady, six-time champ. It's just unbelievable. How about Belichick? Just, uh, Belichick, too. Unbelievable. They're just the best. Best coach, best tight end. It's just an honor to play with So if Tom Brady comes to you and says, Gronk, I'm not going to let you retire. You're going to have to come back here. What are you going to say? Uh, we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> hey, Rob, have, how you thought about, have you thought about you know, it? I'm just going to celebrate tonight. I'm not thinking about that tonight. You know, that's for, like, the next week or two, see where I'm at. So, you know, I'm just going to celebrate with the team life. That's where, that's where it's at. In the end, Ruthie, the Patriots only needed the one touchdown because the defense held the high-flying Rams offense to just three points. Who would have thought a Patriots team anchored in a Super Bowl by the defense? And Yanni, all of the players saying after the game that the defense is really the unit that doesn't get enough credit. Our defense, that was, that was incredible. It's a team game, man. We, we needed everyone out there. The defense played so well. We finally... Helped them out by getting a, a touchdown there. They stopped them, got the interception. Steph got the pick. And then uh, we were able to run the bunch down. And then, you know, Steve drilled the field goal. So uh, that was a, a great way to end it. And this Patriots team will continue to celebrate this one, especially on Tuesday at the parade. But let's look ahead just a bit. Trey Flowers is a free agent. Chris Hogan is a free agent. Trent Philip Brown. Dorsett, Trent Brown, and of course Brian Flores, the de facto defensive coordinator, heading to Miami. So the team will look a little different next year. A lot of holes to fill, but also a lot of options there for the Patriots to fill those holes. So only time will tell. As the Patriots begin preparation to repeat... Super Bowl 54 in Miami next Search year. Search for seven. <laughs> You're already branding. I like that. <laughs> With Ruthie Polenski, I'm Yanni Karakis. Back to you. So the Patriots, this is a good way to think about yeah. it. They have as many trophies now as New England has states. And being a New England sports fan can get expensive, especially for those who want to show off their pride every time we win a championship by getting those hats and T-shirts. Title makes 12 for the region's four major sports teams since 2001, starting with the Patriots win over the Rams 17 years ago yesterday. The then St. Louis Rams. Alexandra Leslie continues our team coverage live in Warwick. Good morning. Well, we're back here again at Dick's Sporting Goods to celebrate yet another win for New England. If you did the math, it was just 99 days ago that the Red Sox won the World Series. Now, Patriots championship shirts are available here and, of course, at the Patriots Pro Shop. Now, the stylish shirt that the Patriots wore in the locker room after the big game are the ones that Pawtucket Company Mirror Image started working on printing late last night. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, the company says it doesn't usually print for local teams but they do have a contract with company fanatics to print championship shirts. Now, the shirts are sent Friday. That's when the shop closes down early in preparation for Sunday night. Employees work overnight until about 7 or 8 this morning. About 30 shirts can be printed at a time. As to when they start printing, crews can't legally do so until the game is over. Last night, the manager told us how it all unfolds before they're shipped to the pro shop. Running around yelling, it's day one, they won, and everybody jumps into action. We're pretty experienced. We've done it for many, many, many years. So there's a little bit of pressure just because you never know, but um, we're well practiced at prepping. 
And if you can't make it to the pro shop this morning, other shirts are available at Dick's Sporting Goods later this morning. There's already a handful of fans already lined up behind me. Doors open at 6. Reporting live in Warwick, I'm Alexandra Leslie, Eyewitness News. It is now 538 on your Monday. Still ahead on Eyewitness News this morning. Protests outside of a uh, Brooklyn prison growing. Hundreds of inmates go days without heat and electricity this morning. Let you know how officials are responding. And L.A. fans rolled the dice with Super Bowl predictions, proving their spirits were too high as they faced the Patriots. We'll have the details. Michelle, thank you. Evan Asus is covering America this morning. People have been rallying outside of a detention center in Brooklyn, New York. Inmates there say they have been without heat or electricity for days. Officials say there was a partial power outage after a fire broke out in the generator switch gear room. They're working to restore power. Protesters say they want action now. You got mothers out here crying. Say something to us. These are our families in here. These are our families in here. We're actually fixing the situation right now as we speak. We got electricians working around the clock. Utility company says the electrical issues in the prison are internal and they're ready to reconnect power once the repairs are complete. In the meantime, yesterday, a Super Bowl, Super Bowl boycott in New Orleans. Thousands of Saints fans packing the street, protesting over the refs who call the Saints versus L.A. Rams and the AFC Championship. Here is the play that uh, fans think blew the Saints' chance for Super Bowl 53. Uh, after there was no call on this play, a federal judge in the state tossed the lawsuit, filed by a pair of Saints ticket holders last week to try to replay the end of that game. While waiting for kickoff, some fans rolled the dice too early, predicting who would win the Super Bowl, involving some fortune-telling animals. All right, we got a sea lion here predicting that the Rams would win. He was wrong. April the Giraffe on our side, predicting the Patriots would get the win. And then here's some extreme displays of fandom. One L.A. fan had gotten a tattoo reading, Rams, Super Bowl champions, Super Bowl 53, mm. prior to the Patriots' win. All right, 5.43, your time when we come back. And I'm going to this morning. A lot of talk beyond the Super Bowl last night. We're getting a closer look at how both the halftime show and commercials played a role in all of it. Coverage you can count on. This is Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. So if you were hoping for a touchdowns, a lot of offense last night, of course you didn't get it last night. No, but there were always the commercials and the halftime show. So did they deliver for the millions watching worldwide? Michaela McDonald has that story new this morning. Well, Danielle and Patrick, it can actually be hard to try to find a time to take a break during the big game because you don't want to miss any plays or the commercials. And last night's commercials included some old faithfuls like the M&Ms and the Budweiser Clydesdales, but also some of the, of the bigger names in music and TV. Pepsi's more than okay. It's okay. Pepsi had Cardi B, Lil, Lil John, and Steve Carell in their spot. Bud Light and HBO teamed up to present a Game of Thrones crossover commercial, teasing ahead to the start of Game of Thrones in mid-April. And Verizon had a tearjerker with Chargers coach Anthony Lynn meeting the first responders who saved his life years ago. And Maroon 5 headlined the halftime show with guest appearances from Big Boy and Travis Scott, a show that drew lackluster reviews on social media. But the ad getting a lot of attention, the NFL's ad uh, that features the NFL's 100th season gala, some of the greatest players of all time were featured, including Tom Brady. Good after, old man. Let's hold these. And in the ad, Brady hands off his rings to get in on the action. And now, of course, he'll have an extra ring to add this year after last night's win. Michaela McDonald, Eyewitness News. Now, here's meteorologist Michelle Muscatello with your Pinpoint Weather 12 forecast. All right, thanks, Melissa. More coverage you can count on coming up on Eyewitness News. After this break, another big ring. The Tom Brady dynasty rolls on as Patriots win Super Bowl 53. We'll tell you how a local business is paying tribute to the sixth ring. The Stock Report is brought to you by White Cross Pharmacy. Local pharmacists, local people, delivering the med pack free to your door. Eyewitness News on WPRI 12 continues. 
Well, another Super Bowl win means another finger to put a ring on it for Tom Brady. You don't need another hand now, right? <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it. This mural showing Tom Brady with five Super Bowl rings dangling at his side. It's in South Kingstown, paying tribute to the Patriots, especially Brady, with all of his accomplishments on the field. Just another to add to his collection now as the Patriots won Super Bowl 53, as you know, last night. The business owner who paints the mural says he will be adding another ring sometime this week. We'll let you know when that happens. And if you're just waking up and starting your Monday with us, it's about four minutes to six. Here are some of the stories we're following at 6 a.m. Patriots Super Bowl champs for the sixth time in franchise history. Live coverage from Atlanta and Foxborough. Well, they partied hard after the Pats secured that sixth win, but some Pats fans got a little bit unruly. Plus, parade details are in. We'll talk all about that when I see you live at the top of the hour from Gillette. And wait till you see how mild it's going to be for Tuesday's victory parade in Boston. Early this morning, though, a weather alert for black ice. I'll have more details coming up. And that black ice is a concern for your morning commute. I'll show you where I am tracking some slowdowns. That's straight ahead. Another full hour of Eyewitness News this morning coming up right here on WPRI 12. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this.